God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for Impact Chat with Pastor Colbert. I am Pastor Colbert, and I'm just plum pleasing well that you're with us on tonight. Amen. God bless you for joining us for this segment of Impact Chat with Pastor Colbert. I will be presenting on tonight. Won't be able to take any questions, but we're just hoping that all that we say and do will be a blessing unto you. Just before we start, Father, we thank you as always for your love and for your kindness, for the multitude of your tender mercies. Thank you because you're good to us all the time. And now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each one of you for being with us on tonight. And uh, I pray that the Lord will richly bless you through this impact chat tonight with Pastor Colbert. I want to share with you from what the Lord has given me concerning wisdom on tonight. Wisdom. The Bible said wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all that getting, get understanding. That's Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 7. Now, I want to make sure you understand this. There is a difference between wisdom and knowledge. According to the Bible, knowledge puffs up. See, when we learn something and we think we know it and nobody can tell us anything, well, I know what I'm talking about. Knowledge can puff us up and can make us feel like we will kind of, if you would use the word bigoty, you know, because I know what I'm talking about. I, I, Because I read this, or I saw it somewhere and I remember this. Knowledge puffs up. First Corinthians chapter eight, verse number one. Say, we know that we all have knowledge, but it's a knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifies. See, knowledge can make us proud and arrogant, but when we have the wisdom of God, wisdom will make you humble and teachable. When a person has wisdom, they, they, they know what they don't know, so they humble themselves and they listen and they're teachable because they understand by wisdom that there is more that they can learn. And see, you got to understand, you can read extensively. And, and, and accumulate a lot of knowledge, but still lack wisdom. You also don't become wise just by growing older. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, when they, when they learned a few things from a few books, that they know it all, but you still can lack wisdom. And no matter how long you've been reading, how long you've been studying, you don't become wise just by growing older or having more experience in life. Wisdom, wisdom, talking about the wisdom that God ordains, that God recognizes, wisdom is not natural. It does not matter if you're young or old. It doesn't matter if you're experienced or inexperienced, highly educated or uneducated. Wisdom comes by God's unmerited favor. God is the one that gives wisdom. I'll give you a scripture on that at the end because I want you to remember that scripture. So I'm going to give that to you last so that you can understand you get wisdom from God. See, listen to what God's word says about the importance of wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. See, when you put wisdom first and you put wisdom up and you exalt wisdom and you, you reverence wisdom from God, wisdom will promote you. Your knowledge sometimes, people think, oh, you, they think they know everything. And sometimes it will cause people to not want you around because you've, they, they, they perceive you as being a know-it-all. But wisdom, the scripture says, will exalt you. You exalt her, rather, she will promote you. Wisdom will bring you honor when you embrace wisdom. It will bring you honor. Wisdom will place on your head an ornament of grace. That's God's unmerited favor. Remember, I told you that wisdom comes by God's unmerited favor. Wisdom will place on your head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory will she deliver to you. That's what the Bible says about wisdom in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, 8, and 9. Wisdom. Wisdom. You want wisdom. Don't worry about the knowledge so much as having wisdom, because wisdom will give you the knowledge of how to do what you do. 
You see, promotion and honor all come as a result of receiving wisdom. Matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 says that Christ is made unto us wisdom first, then righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Wisdom comes first. Christ is our wisdom. He is our righteousness. He's our holiness. He's our redemption. But all of, out of all of that wisdom, notice, comes first. The key thing that we should pray for every day is the wisdom of God. We need the wisdom of God to guide us in everything that we do. I've, I've determined within myself, I don't even want to manage the church that I pastor with my own knowledge. I want to depend on Jesus and his wisdom because my knowledge won't get me anywhere. See, Apostle Paul said this in his letter to the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, then verses uh, 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 4 and 5, I think it is. He said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Notice, he said, for I determined not to know anything among you, say Jesus Christ and him crucified. Well, nobody to think my little wisdom is something because the wisdom of the world, man's wisdom is, is a bad place to be. If you got wisdom from man, that's, that, that, that's not good. As a matter of fact, if the, the scripture goes on in verse four and five, it say, and, and, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith, because see, we don't want your faith to stand in man. He said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. When you have faith in the wisdom of men, when men have used big words to make it sound like they know so much or they've talked, you know, so proudly about things, you have a lot more confidence in man than you do of God. And the testimony of men that are wise men is that they have given you a word from the Lord and you know it's a word from God and not just some, some, some made up stuff from a man that sounds good and strokes your ego. When we preach, it ought to matter to you because we hear God, we hear Christ in our preaching. What I'm teaching you tonight, you need to understand it's not about man's wisdom. This is from the word of God. It is the wisdom of God that makes a difference. Understand, get God's wisdom. Don't go on the internet and find all of these preachers that can talk elaborately and put on all of these airs and they're just going around using these big, no, no, no. Let your faith rest in the, in, in, in the power of God, not in the wisdom of man. First Corinthians chapter three and verse 19 say, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. So why would you go get built up in something that to God is foolishness? Use the wisdom of God's word so that you'll stand in the power of God, not in the wisdom of the man who may be the messenger of the vessel of God. And I've got to close here. Amen. I'm so grateful that you're here with us. But understand this, when we operate in the wisdom of God, we take no credit for it because this wisdom is from Jesus. And our boast is in him and him alone. Whatever I know, I know it by Jesus. Whatever I do, I do it by Jesus. Amen. I, it, 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 everything that I accomplish is by him and it's through him and him alone. Not because I'm good, not because I'm great, but it's because of his goodness and graciousness towards me. The power of his spirit in me that causes me to be able to do the things that I do. And then also you got to understand when you don't know, ask God. If we ask for his wisdom, he'll give it to us and he'll give it to us liberally and unupbraided. As a matter of fact, James 1 and 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. See, he would lead us to supernatural 
success when we walk in his wisdom. All we need to do is know the difference. We just need the wisdom to know that God's wisdom in us is for our good, but it's for his glory. If what we do doesn't glorify God, we're not operating in wisdom of God. We're operating in the wisdom of man. Man's first instinct is self-preservation, but the spirit's first instinct is give God the glory, give him the praise. Because if you give him the glory, he'll give you the good out of the situation. Let's look at Psalms chapter three, verse 13 through 20. It says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. So what I want to look at uh, is, is uh, wisdom. Uh, most of us need more of it, you know, but look at what wisdom really is all about. Our text says that you're blessed if you can find wisdom and understanding. So the question is, how do we find wisdom? Proverbs 8 and 1 uh, says, does not wisdom call out? does not understanding raise a voice. See, we got to understand wisdom is calling for us. The question is, are we listening? Most of us are too busy talking. Most of us too busy saying something rather than listening to what wisdom is saying to us. You got to remember, what was that your mama told you about the reason you have two ears and one mouth? Sometimes it's just plain wisdom to be quiet. The Bible tells us study to be quiet. That's wisdom when we take time to be quiet so that we can listen and hear. Let's, let's go to what the Bible says also about wisdom a little further. In Job 28 and 28, they say the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to shun evil is understanding. As a matter of fact, we see that it is absolutely necessary for us to have wisdom. We're still talking about wisdom. Proverbs 8 and 35 says, For whosoever, whoever finds me, finds life and receives favor from the Lord. That's talking about wisdom. Wisdom is saying to us, whoever finds me, finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find me, harms himself and all who hate me, love death so we 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 need wisdom it's just absolute necessity we need wisdom because it says if we fail to find wisdom we harm ourselves and if we hate wisdom if we don't even want to find it then we love death so wisdom is necessary let's look at the benefits of wisdom also in proverbs 3 13 through 20 as we have just finished reading. One of the benefits of wisdom in, in Proverbs chapter three is uh, greatness. The Lord by his wisdom has founded the earth. Look how great God is. By his wisdom, he founded the earth. That's in verse number 19. Amen. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. John 1, 1 through 4. O Lord, how manifold are thy works, and wisdom hath thou made them all. 
You see, verse after verse after verse throughout the Bible speaks about the wisdom, the wisdom of God, the greatness of his wisdom. But not only is uh, one of the benefits of it the greatness, but another benefit of uh, God's wisdom are riches. The Bible says length of days is in her right hand and in her left riches and honor. That's verse number 16. See, the treasures of true wisdom are the treasures which belong to Jesus Christ. Length of days, riches, honor, everlasting life, unsearchable riches on the right hand of God. In him is life and the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and all the fullness of God. He is crowned with glory and honor. With long life doth he satisfy those to whom he has shown his salvation. See, when we start looking, that's in Psalm 91. When we start looking at the, the wisdom of God, it, it shows greatness, but it also shows riches. It, it, wisdom is just so principal in the lives of the people of God until we must seek it, we must pursue it, we must desire it, we must love it, we must want with everything in us to have the wisdom of God. Because when we have wisdom of God, not only is this showing us greatness and riches, but the wisdom of God also has influence. Wisdom has a mighty influence. One of the places that it has an influence, influence is on the heart. The Bible said in verse number 13, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. So your, your heart is upbeat and lifted when you find wisdom. The yoke of wisdom is easy. Her burden is light. So to find the wisdom of God is to find rest to your soul, light to the eyes, and joy to the heart. To find wisdom, Christ is wisdom, is to find the holy, blissful, all-conquering will and mercy of God. A man cannot make such a fight uh, without being renewed in the whole inner man. There's no way you can find Christ, find the wisdom of God, and it not make a difference in your life. When you find the wisdom of God, it will make your life so much better. Hallelujah. And, and not only does wisdom have a mighty influence on the heart, it has a mighty influence on your life. The merchandise, the Bible says, of it is much better than the merchandise of silver. That's in verse number 14. Those who find wisdom find a new object in life and a new sphere of action. See, when you find real wisdom, it's going to change the trajectory of your life as it has been. It's going to set it in a new motion, it's going to set it on new affections, it's going to set it in a new direction. What's going to happen is you want to trade with Christ and work for him because it's more profitable than the best investment you can ever make on earth. The Bible says the gain thereof is better than fine gold. It's better to have the wisdom of God than it is to have an insider trading on Wall Street, because insider trading is only gonna work as long as Wall Street is up. Wall Street fluctuates. But the one thing about God is his wisdom is constant. So it's even better than the, 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 the fine gold that people trade on the NASDAQ when they start trading commodities. And then we also look at, uh, besides greatness and riches, uh, an influence, amen, you, you, you look at desirability. All the things that you can desire, all the things that you can want, all the things that you long for are not to be compared with wisdom. That's what verse 15 tells us. It's not possible for you to desire anything better than wisdom. 
Paul knew this when he said, what things were gained to me, those things I counted lost for Christ. He said, well, things that were gained to me, I counted lost for Christ, that I might win Christ. See, you may desire great things, but the affections of the heart can never be set on a more worthy and needful thing than the wisdom of God. Because the Bible still, remember, it tells us wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Exalt her, and she will promote you. Hallelujah. Exalt her, and she will promote you. So we, we learn from Solomon's life that God honors the prayers of his people, especially when they pray for wisdom. And we need God's wisdom to determine the focus or the priority of our lives. So what we need to do is we need to begin to pray and ask God for his wisdom. Ask God for his direction, his understanding, so that we can have the wisdom of God operating in our lives. So when does God honor the prayers of his people for wisdom? 1 Kings chapter 3, God gave Solomon the opportunity to ask him for anything. Solomon is very aware that he's not capable of adequately ruling the nation, and he asked for wisdom. And this pleases God so much that God granted his request for wisdom. But get this, then he gives him riches and honor as well. So we understand now that wisdom is the principal thing with God. When you ask for wisdom, God will give you everything else that you need in life because the wisdom of God will bring to you everything that you need to live a happy, healthy, long, and successful life. So let's, let's kind of recap what we talked about. There's a difference between wisdom and knowledge now. Because when it comes down to the knowledge of man, knowledge puffs up. Uh, but, 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 but wisdom makes you humble and teachable. And a lot of people, you know, they read a lot of books. They look at a lot of things and they think they know a lot because they look at TV. They, 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 they read a few things here and there what somebody else has wrote. But, but um, you, you don't get wisdom by, under, by, by reading the, uh, the, the newspaper. You don't get wisdom by, by learning things, going on Facebook or YouTube. Wisdom is not natural. It doesn't matter who you are. Wisdom comes by God's unmerited favor. And I say wisdom is the is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom in all you're getting. Get understanding. You need to understand what wisdom really is. You exalt wisdom, she'll promote you. She'll bring you honor. When you embrace wisdom, amen. You you you'll be honored, amen. And 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 the the, the Wisdom will also place an ornament of grace on your head. So always remember, amen, wisdom with God is the principal thing. Seek his wisdom. Don't seek money. Seek wisdom. Wisdom will bring you all the finances you need. Don't seek uh, 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 for, for, you know, uh, to understand certain things. Just have the wisdom of God. Because the wisdom of God will help you to understand that you don't need to know everything anyway. Some things is just better for you not to know. You got to know what you know and what you don't know, and you got to know what you don't need to know. That's why it's good to have wisdom and not just understanding or not just knowledge. And then understand this as we close again. Remember 1 Corinthians 3 and 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. So God wants us to have God's wisdom. He wants us to have his wisdom, not our own. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Because when you understand that there is a wisdom of man, that's not the wisdom of God. The wisdom of man can mess you up, but the wisdom of God will set you up for a wonderful, a powerful, and a mightily blessed life in God. Amen. God bless you. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And we look forward to uh, being together with you again next Wednesday 
uh, as we return again for Impact Chat with Pastor Colbert. God bless you. We will talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day. And as I close always, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to smile upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and shine upon you. And the Lord give you his peace. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Good night, everybody.